This fractal branching network, there's basically five components to it. The blood or circulatory system, the lymph or lymphatic system, the nervous system, the lungs or the tracheal bronchial trees, and the living matrix, connective tissue matrix, which is this kind of the home of the meridians. So what PMF does is it opens up all your fractal branching networks. And we hear a lot about PMF therapy for microcirculation. And what that is, is it's opening up the fractal branching network of your circulatory system down to the capillary level even by increasing nitric oxide. And we'll look at that in a minute. But actually, it's working on all these different fractal branching networks. And what this does is it helps the body and the flow of energy and information to take place between all your cells, between your all your organs and your body to your cells, your cells to your body and the environment. And, it, and again, it happens at split second speeds. And if there's any blockages in these networks, you know, ill health is a result. And, and we will look at that. But let's first kind of look at what a fractal branching network is. So first of all, fractals are self-similar objects, an object or quantity that displays self-similarity in a somewhat technical sense on all scales. So fractal branching is a type of fractals where bifurcations are taking place. So a bifurcation, simply put, is a splitting of one main body into two or more parts, kind of like a highway that splits into two and then maybe splits again. So in your body, this you can see this image here of the different of five iterations of a, of a fractal branch. So you got something splitting, and splitting again, splitting again, splitting again. So let's briefly take a tour of these five fractal branching networks. And then we're going to really focus on the circulatory system because a lot of research with PMF is with microcirculation. So, but just know that when we talk about that example, it actually applies to all five of these networks. So the first, which we'll look at in more detail, is the blood or circulatory system. So you have your arteries, which branch into arterioles, keep branching, keep branching, you know, 12 or 13 times or so down to the capillary level. The next is the lungs, and the tracheal bronchial tree is just amazing. In fact, it looks like a tree when you turn it upside down. There's 23 levels or stories of branching, and this gives the lungs basically the surface area of a tennis court. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this, but a fractal branching network, why it's seen so much in nature is that it maximizes a surface area for a given volume, and it allows a given volume to have an interconnection between every other part of that volume, like nothing else can do. So there's a good reason why nature uses this in trees and rivers, and, you know, it's just, just so many examples in nature. So back to the body, the third is the nervous system, you know, in the brains. And here you can see a few images of fractal branching in the, in the neurons in the brains. The next is the lymphatic system, which, you know, kind of like the, the circulatory system, it doesn't quite branch to the level that the circulatory system does, but very close. This is the home of your immune systems, as well as sort of like a sewage system in your body. You know, most of your cells are bathing in lymph, not blood. Blood is carrying nutrients to the capillaries, which diffuse into the lymph, into the cells. And the fifth is the living matrix, the connective tissue matrix. And I've showed this little image before, and this connects you from your skin to the very nucleus of every cell. So your connective tissue is a fractal branching network that branches all the way down into the nucleus of your each cell. So it doesn't just stop at the cells like the circulatory system does. It keeps branching all the way down to the nucleus. 